Ooh. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at the pattern on the jaws. Such a striking looking lizard. And he knows he's so striking looking, don't you? You know you're handsome. You want some food? Come on. Bam, no problems eating. These guys are champs. Here we go, look at that snake. That is an insane looking rattlesnake. Look how much bigger this guy has gotten since I first got him from McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. His color has actually changed too. After the past couple times shedding, this animal is super white around the face and now it's starting to get darker and darker as it sheds. Never cut it as a blind man. Never cut it as a poor man stealing. And this is how I was raised in Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just kidding, because I paid a lot of money for this. What's going on, beautiful people? How you guys doing? Staying nice and safe, healthy, staying away from big public areas. Uh, staying uh, nice and uh, isolated, I guess. I don't know. These are the times when we all have to hang out with our family, stay close to family, and get nice and comfy and wait for these times to roll on over because with a virus like this, we gotta be safe and not contaminate everyone, not carry on the pathogen, keep carrying on everywhere, breathing on everyone, going to public places, be smart and safe. Today, we are gonna be feeding the lace monitors and right in here, we've got little Lacey. He's hanging out. He looks pretty keen for a feed. He knows when I'm around that all means ply time or tucker time. Do you know what tucker is, Mike? Do you know what tucker is, Mike? Tucker is what you fill your belly with when you're hungry in Australia. So it's either a sandwich or some, um, yeah, I mean, Vegemite if you're a freak. If you like Vegemite, that stuff's disgusting. I'm sorry. Sorry. If you, if you eat Vegemite, I'll pray for you tonight. Don't worry. But uh, for my little babies, I'm going to be feeding them pinkies because they love their little pinkies. We'll put this one right here. Lacey, come on, come on, you want some? Yeah, you do, come on, come on, buddy. He's growing like a weed, I love my lace monitors, come on, come on, it's yummy. He's just like, I don't know, I'm still warming up, not sure what's going on, here. Go ahead, get Varus, Varus, the lace monitor found only in Australia. Awesome lizard species, coming in a few different localities depending on what part of Eastern Australia they're found at. And then also there's a wild occurring, a naturally occurring morph, which is a skin mutation. And that mutation is called the Bell's Phase, which is this little guy, his name is Jack, if you guys have never seen him before. He's a Bell's Phase lace monitor, same species, just a morph. So I'm gonna put him right back over here and hopefully, it will come out in a moment and have a feed. Let's see if Mr. Lacey wants to come and have some more taka. Come on, you want some more taka, Mike? Come on. Keen ass, keen ass, Mike. Come on, run over here. Come over yonder. That was really cool. Look at that man, no problem. Wants to hang out, chow down. He's such a little beast. Oh, I love him. <laughs> want another one? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Oh, cute little baby. You're gonna have a full belly today, huh? Little kiss. These more pinkies. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at the pattern on the jaws. Such a striking looking lizard. And he knows he's so striking looking, don't you? You know you're handsome. Want another one? Want another one? You got it by the face! You got it by the face! You just want to call him a grizzly bear! Let me have your face! Such a beast of a lizard. I can't wait for these guys to be bigger. And they're going to be big fast. They're growing like weeds. In a year, this lizard will be big enough to be in an outdoor enclosure. One more? Let's see if we can get him on the camera for the feet. You want it? You want it? Damn. Ah, where are you going? Chilling down? I'm hungry too, dude. We gotta wrap this up so I can go get breakfast. Look at that. Yummy, right? He's like, yeah, cranking it down his neck into his stomach. What's going on? Alright, we're gonna put him right back here so we can feed Jack the Bell Space Lace Monitor. 
Do you want food? Hey. Hey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's really quick. Does not like to hang out. Still getting used to me. Slowly working on a relationship. Oh. Look at this. You guys haven't seen this yet. The automatic misters are going off for the bioactive setups. So we've got the flat nose pit vipers right here. They're getting misted down. We've got the eyelash vipers right here going off. And then soon, the rest of these enclosures will start going off as well. This is really cool because you guys don't really see this too often. Look at that. Check that out. So it keeps it nice and humid. Keeps the dirt nice and moist. He's getting sprayed down. And then if they're in the corners and they're not getting misted down, I usually come in here with the manual sprayer and I'll spray each and every one of these vipers so they drink. But they're looking good. We'll be feeding them pretty soon. Back to the lysis. What are you guys doing? You guys organizing crime? Come on. What are you doing? Get over here. You come over here and leave Jack alone. Come on. A little bit of mischief going on, huh? A little bit of mischief. You up to mischief? Yeah, you up to mischief? All right, let's get a little thank you for... Jack, Jack, look at this. Oh, don't! <laughs> Jack, can you wait one second? All right, this is fine. Eat the whole entire tongue while you're at it. A little carpet python. All right, let's see. Jack, you want some more? Jack, not you, Lacey. Not you. Jack. There you go, buddy. Lacey's like, come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Let me have Adam. Let me steal his stuff. He doesn't need that stuff. All right. No, no, no. Have another. Ah! Lacey's like, come on, man. Why are you doing that to me? Let me get some of that. Come on, man. Why are you trying to block me, man? Sorry, buddy. I'm the bouncer here. All right, all you cool cats and kittens. We're going to wrap it up here with the Lacey's and move on over to the eyelash vipers and give them a feed. The two golden phase eyelash vipers in here eat off the tongs, no problem. But the Christmas phase right here does not eat off the tongs. The situation with him is it's not really like force feeding, uh, but I, I put him on a paper towel and then I put the mouse right up to his lips and usually he just engulfs it right there. So I might actually have to take him out and feed him. He's drinking off his own body right now, so we'll leave him alone for right now. And we'll feed the other ones. So let's see, I got this big pinky. It's gonna go towards the golden eyelash viper right here in the back. All right, let's give this one a feed. You want some food? You want some food? Come on. Bam, no problems eating. These guys are champs. Beautiful young eyelash viper, probably about a year old. And they can actually get upwards to two feet long, sometimes just a little over two feet, but that's about max. Not the most potent species of viper found in Central America, but they have enough venom to take down small mammals, frogs, and if possible, small birds and bats. Look at those fangs. Typical hinge fangs for any member of the Viperidae family. Rattlesnakes, tree vipers, all that fun stuff. Using heat seeking pits and fangs to hunt down their prey. Offer the other eyelash viper a pinky right now. This one's a little bit smaller, but still beautiful. It has real light orange spots going down its spine, and as this animal gets older and keeps shedding, those spots are going to become more and more predominant. So I'm super excited to see how the snake looks as it gets older. Look at that. And nothing helps better to grow than some pinky mice. And he's got no problem taking them down. Look at that, you can actually see the spots, the lightly colored spots going all the way down his spine, all the way to the tip of his tail. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that snake turns out when it gets older. All right guys, we've got the little yellow eyelash finishing up that meal. I've got another pinky right here. We're gonna first try and just feed the snake. 
Christmas face and see if it will eat off the tongs. Hey. Hey, guy. Hey, hey, buddy. Okay. Nothing so far. Typical of this thing. Hey. Hey, if I poke you a little bit. Nope, nope. Nope, nope. Okay, so, as usual, this snake doesn't want to eat off the tongs, so he is very fancy and prefers to be hand fed. So, I've got to actually get my little handy dandy snake hook ready. We're going to pull out the eyelash viper, put him around on the paper towel, and do a little bit of an assist feeding. Take this snake off the branch. I've got to be very, very delicate with this snake because obviously this is an animal that is not just venomous, but it's fragile. This is a very fragile animal, a very light bodied pit viper that can easily have its ribs broken by dropping them. So you want to be very delicate with these snakes and also very careful because such a small viper has such a tight range with striking. I'm going to coax them off the snake hook because I need them on this flat surface. One of the only times that I've nearly been venomated, I mean I've had lots of close calls obviously because of the way I handle animals and where I've been, the situations I've put myself into, but eyelash viper has been the only time that I've nearly been envenomated, and that was one of my first trips to Costa Rica. One about this size, I was tailing it and using a stick, and that thing flung back so fast it nearly put some fangs in me. But luckily, I've got cat like reflexes, and I was able to avoid that bite. Knock on wood, that something like that never happens again, but you know, this is a dangerous career, and you gotta accept what comes with it. If not, this isn't for you. So basically I'm just going to put some pressure on the snake with this paper towel roll, nice and soft, easy. I would use my fingers, but you know what, with little vipers like this and such a small head to work with, you can easily get stuck with a fang, since these are hinge fang snakes. So I'm just going to put the food right into his mouth. Usually you search chomping down, but he's not doing it. Come on. Oh, oh, he had it. Okay, there we go. He's gonna start working that pinky down his throat and we're gonna leave him on top of this can so we know he finishes. And then once he's done, we'll put him back in his enclosure. This is what we've been having to do for the past, I don't know, month, month and a half. We finally figured out that he only likes to eat when you put the pinky in his mouth. Hopefully eventually he realizes that pinkies mean food and we can just feed him right off the tongue so we don't have to do this little event every time we have a feeding. But other than that, the snake's perfectly healthy. He's doing good. Beautiful looking. Can't wait for him to shed. Beautiful pinks going all the way down the back with a light green tone. Such an awesome little pit viper. We're done feeding this little one. Now that he's got that pinky down his gullet, let's put him back inside his enclosure. Looking really good. I wasn't about to catch the eyelash fiber. I know you guys are probably like, did he have his hand ready to catch it? No, I wouldn't do that. Alright, we're gonna put him right back onto his favorite to get him sticky. Come on. Come on. There we go. Just a little bit tickle. Look at all of them. They're all fat and happy. Alright, cool. Let's put this away. Let's lock this up. Perfecto, perfecto. Now I want to show you guys a little something we got cooking over here. I haven't seen this guy in a while. The Yurkon rattlesnake. Beautiful little snake has gone through shed. This is probably one of my favorite rattlesnakes on the planet. The more I think about it, you know, Eastern Diamondbacks are close to heart, so it's kind of hard to say that Yurkon's my favorite on the planet. But man. Once you see what this guy looks like after his shed, you are going to be baffled. Look at this. He's in the back. He's hiding right now. But he's got a shed right here. You can actually see the tail end of the shed right there, leading into the enclosure. Got a little bit of shed. There we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's coming. He's like, you steal my shed. Look at him. See him right there? Look at him right there. He's like, you steal my shed. What are you doing? And it looks like the isopods have already been making quick work of this. You can see it's all torn apart, so the little roly-poly bugs in here that will eat up the skin, eat up the poop, 
actually, I think I'm going to leave the skin right up here in the front so guests can see that. And you know what? I think what I'll do, let me go get that can. Let's do a little inspection on the Eurocoin rattlesnake to see how he's doing. What's up, dude? This snake came from McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary up in West Palm Beach. They have a big pair of Eurocoin rattlesnakes if you guys want to see the adults. Look at this. Get it. Ooh. Getting real big. There we go. Look at that snake. That is an insane looking rattlesnake. Look how much bigger this guy has gotten since I first got him from McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary. His color has actually changed too after the past couple times shedding. This animal is super white around the face and now it's starting to get darker and darker as it sheds. And believe it or not, this is actually one of the most crazy, aggressive, difficult rattlesnake species I've ever had the pleasure of handling. The parents of this rattlesnake uh, were very difficult to handle, full-grown Eurocone rattlesnakes. They do not like being handled on a hook, double hook, any situation. They do not like it. They're at their most comfortable on the ground being left alone, like most snakes. But this one's doing okay. He's not rattling. He's not acting crazy. Once I get him on the hook, he's doing all right. But look at this. He has grown drastically since I first got him, and he was just a wee little baby. Look at that. Beautiful Eurocone rattlesnake. What a beast of a snake. Look at that pattern on the face. Well-developed rattle. Look at that rattle developing right on that tail. Cookies and cream color. Such a badass species only found in Venezuela. So, hopefully in the far future, or maybe near future, I'd be able to get out to Venezuela and see these animals out in the wild, along with all the other amazing animals that are found out there, like Orinoco crocodiles in the Orinoco River. All right, so we'll put this guy right back into his habitat, let him live his private life. And these guys are found in more of a dry, arid part of Venezuela. So as you can see, the it's not like super wet in here. It's not drenched like the rainforest setups I have for my eyelash vipers and whatnot. It's actually quite dry and it gets missed once a day for the plants. You gonna go in? Slowly cruising in. I love your cone rattlesnakes. Such an awesome guy. I can, I can see an isopod. That's like, where'd my skin go? All right, guys, we're going to get that little tail tucked in. There we go. We're going to close up the enclosure. And I will see you cool cats and kittens on the next one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Am I? I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay wild. Stay... Wait, that's what Kylie Peterson says. Anyways, stay beautiful, stay gangster, and I'll see you on the next one. Keep those hands clean, stay out of public areas, and love your planet. If you eat Vegemite, I'll pray for you tonight.